Uh, good afternoon. Um, when I came in this afternoon, uh, Weng Solano expressed her surprise at why I'm talking about empowering the Aitas to conserve the forest instead of talking about my 40 years work on snails. The Aitas, because they are among the most deprived of the, among the indigenous communities. And conserving the forest because our forests are in such bad conditions that we have to do something about it. I'd like to share with you some of the uh, principles, some of the ideas that we have been developing. First is that in addition to the science uh, component, to the social science component of helping communities, we think science and technology is also very important. And then the community must be empowered to ensure sustainability of development. We don't believe in dole outs. And for us, empowerment means not only knowing about the rights, but knowing about responsibilities and giving them tools and the capability to rise above poverty. And then one of the questions that the Aitas asked us was, uh, paano nyo masisiguro na hindi makakasira ng aming kultura itong gusto nyong gawin dito? Uh, makakatulong ba ito talaga? Because they are, have been, they have received uh, many helps from uh, assistance from NGOs and sabi nila wala naman nangyari. Okay, so we could not answer them at that time so we thought hard. Paano ba natin to masasagot? So we felt the need for an objective tool for assessing the impact of development interventions in the community. Okay, this is the um, site of the, where the Aitas are staying. Uh, during the Vietnam War, uh, the Philippines offered to provide a place where the refugees can stay temporarily before the refugees go on to their destination countries. It was uh, Imelda who saw this place and decided that this is a very good place because it's beautiful for a uh, Philippine Refugee Processing Center. The refugee camp had uh, about 21,000, a population of 21,000, which is actually bigger than the population of Morong Town. We found the Aitas when we went there in 2001, and we tried to get to know them. We found that they have a very low educational status, only four out of uh, about 300 Aitas are high school graduates, and they, their healthy status is very poor. A very high infant mortality rate, about 100, uh, more than 150 per 1,000, and there was a great deal of malnutrition. And they were surviving on 0.47 cents as dollars per day per person, which is extremely way below the extreme poverty levels set by the UN. UNDP at that time. Today, the extreme poverty level is already 1.25. Because, and this is so because they have lost their livelihood from the forest. And they cannot really be employed outside the reservation. Very few are employed by the SBMA. The ITAS have told us about the, tail, the declining honey yield. When the, uh, when the PRPC was uh, closing, the um, settlers who farmed the land, who, who uh, cut down the trees and started farms around PRPC to, su to supply food to the uh, refugees, started competing with the Aitas for the honey, the honey uh, gathering, which is the traditional uh, main means of livelihood of the Aitas. And in 2001, we established the Rural Link Program. We decided that maybe the best way to help them is to mobilize science and technology to help reduce poverty. Our approach is to first, we have to empower and mobilize the natural stewards of the forest, meaning the Aitas. 
And then we have to improve productivity and their ability to sustain those activities. In empowering the ITAS, we did community consultations, got the free and prior informed consent of the community. So education involved IP rights and responsibilities. They are teaching them about biodiversity and conservation. And then only after they've realized the importance of biodiversity can you motivate and mobilize them. And so I'll just show you some of what activities that we've been doing. Uh, this is biodiversity inventory and paratoxonomy training for the ITAS. And then we help them uh, start up a nursery, reforestation, and then agroforestry and farming also, this, so that they can, will have uh, fruit to gather and sell. And this is done mainly through the help of Ulysses Ferreras, who is a field biologist. And out of the inventory, one of the outputs is a pictorial guide to the plants of Bataan National Park. And I'm happy to say that this pictorial guide is co-authored by two field botanists and two ITAS. The ITAS because they contributed a lot to guiding the, um, the field biologists. They told them about the, uh, local, the local names and the flowering uh, the flowering uh, periods when the trees uh, when the trees will bear fruit and what are the uses for these trees for the uh, to ensure that they will really be empowered we have now a plan uh, to transfer the management of the conservation effort to the ITAS. This is a five-year project supported by the Philippine Tropical Forest Conservation Foundation. So when we came in and we started the project, 90% of the activities we've been thinking about the, what to do, we, we did the proposal in consultation with them. But I think our effort was more 90% and theirs 10%. The other thing that we are trying to do, as I mentioned earlier, is bioprospecting, which Dr. Grace Yu, uh, has, our colleague from UP Manila, has been doing. She is a nutritional biochemist, and what she did was to survey the traditional food of the ITAS. And among the things that she found, that the ITAS eat rattan. And of course, you know rattan only, you're familiar with rattan only as a material for furniture. Okay. And rattan, the shoot of rattan is one of their food. And one of the species of rattan that they eat is limuran or calamus ornatus, which according to them, uh, if they have diarrhea, then that really gets well right away as soon as they eat the rattan. And Gray Hsu did some uh, chemical studies and found uh, as a support of this claim that the rattan has anti-motility activity, uh, meaning the motility of the gastrointestinal tract. And that her studies show that this is comparable to loperamide, you know, the drug or uh, lomotin, I think is one of the trade names. And that in addition, she found anti-inflammatory and anti-cancer activities. And these are the type of compounds that were isolated. They, all be, they are all saponins. And the most promising compound is spirostanol saponin-3. And uh, we are now applying for a grant to DOST for product development so that eventually we, this can be commercialized and we will have a profit sharing and royalties for the ITAS. And so now, the ITAS have a livelihood activities based on non-timber forest products, honey gathering, they still continue this despite the low yield. And the Asian Institute of Tourism, some faculty members there, helped us uh, develop a, a plan for ecotourism so, and uh, taught them about financial management. And uh, we, they also now have some cultural presentations and they are now selling vegetables and fruit, and fruit uh, from uh, their farms. And they have learned, we're slowly teaching them how to process food, like instant teas, and we are, they are delivering some fruit to our site in uh, Nagbalayong, Morong, so that we make this into wine and other food products. 
and they're starting to sell seedlings of forest trees for other reforestation efforts. And then uh, a few of them are now trying to use seeds for making necklaces, earrings, and key holders, etc. And to support this, uh, what we have done is at the, our site at Nagbalayong along the provincial road, we have given them, them permission to use part of the land so that they can have a marketing outlet. And together with the fishermen and farmers, they formed a group and they're calling themselves Big Kiss and the uh, store as Big Kiss Pasalubong and Souvenir Store. So they're now earning a little bit, but what has happened uh, to the rest of the land that was destroyed during the PRPC operation? Okay, um, the PRPC site, when it ceased operation, uh, most of the build buildings were torn down and the Bataan Technology Park was established. So when this ceased operation, the farms around BTPI were abandoned by settlers because they have no more uh, customer inside the PRPC. And when BTPI was established, the big, big investment investors came in and started buying rights from the farmers. So they, the investors now own big tracts of land around BTPI. You know, when this is a former part, this is a part, still part of the Bataan Natural Park that should go back to the Aitas. And since BTPI has not taken off as a techno park, despite the yearly support of the government paying the board of directors and the officials of the, nothing, uh, not of the techno park, nothing has really happened. And the land remained mostly barren and unproductive. And more recently, the ITAS approached the National Commission on Indigenous People because they said that the government should have returned the PRPC site to them after it closed. But instead, the government converted it to Etnecto Park. So the NCIP is now trying to help the ITAS recover the land. And so, in answer to the question of paano nyo masisiguro kung talaga nakakatulong to sa amin at hindi nakakasira ng aming kultura, we devised a social-cultural development index in consultation with the ITAS. So the Human Development Index of uh, UNDP has educational status, the uh, earning capacity, economic status, and health status as indicators. And to this, uh, the ITAS wanted in cultural integrity as an additional indicator. And it was the ITAS who decided on these uh, weights of, uh, of assessing the uh, the indicators, 40% for cultural integrity because for them that's the most important, 30% on education, earnings is 20%, and last is health status because they say that this, if these are all right, then they will not have any problems with health. And so in 2004, the cultural integrity was quite high, 0.89. Uh, education was very low, earnings very low, health status is also low, and the weighted average, the Sociocultural Development Index, is 0.52. And so, uh, in 2010, recently, we, we did another survey, and this is what we found that the cult cultural integrity dropped a little bit because the younger ones. Uh, can understand their dialect, Bagbukun dialect, but many of them have a hard time speaking it. And then the education status has improved a lot. They now have college graduates and some vocational school graduates, and the earnings have increased about doubled. Okay? And the health status also increased because of the decrease in infant mortality rate. And at least their social cultural development index is now 0.63 compared to 0.52 six years ago. And so we can say to the ITAS, yes, the project that we introduced has a positive impact on your community. And they realize this because they say, Date, we eat only once or twice a day. Now we can eat three times a day and me merienda pa. Okay. So 
this is what I want to leave with you as take-home messages, is that the community, community must be consulted and involved to ensure sustainable development. So in most development activities, you have government, academy, and industry just working together, like in technoparks. But I think for the Philippines, we need to involve the community and strengthen the community, particularly since we are so dependent on bioresources. And then we must, uh, for the community, we must use an objective tool to assess impact of development interventions, such as the sociocultural development index that we developed with the IETAS. And then lastly, from what we have seen in B around BTPI, it's extremely difficult to restore once the, situ the environmental situation is beyond the tipping point. It's beyond the threshold for, uh, for recovery. And so I think it's so important for us to conserve biodiversity and the environment. So with that, I want to thank those, all of those who helped, to Lawrence Ong, who introduced us to the community, to Leonard Ko, the field biologist who was recently gone down in Leyte, and uh, some donors and volunteers here. Michigan State University has helped us with the medical aspect and our project team now that involves um, a fisherman as our community coordinator and the AITA leaders and AITA community. And so thank you.